Fright Nights 2022. Here we go again. Welcome, fear seekers. Amity and Lycanthor Pie, this is your principal speaker. The only thing standing in your way, survival. The amount of hours we put into this promotional campaign. It's like the dream to work on something like that and to, to create content for a show. Yeah. The sun was rising and we were still filming. 4.46 a.m. There he is. Probably one of the greatest days of my entire life. Good evening, everyone. How are you doing? So, the 11th of August, this day started off with quite an ambitious plan to film both survival games and Terminal in the same day. And we all know how it goes when we have plans to film more than one trailer in one day. It never ends well. <laughs> but we were very excited when we first arrived at the park this day. We were back at the mall today, ready for an everyday building. We've just been told of a very exciting uh, new development. Oh, we've got some containers that have arrived on site. So we're making our way over. Let's go and check them out now. We saw for the first time the Survival Games containers at the park. They'd been delivered and were put into their rough places. So it was amazing to see Survival Games starting to come together and it really gave a scale of just how big this brand new maze was going to be. Look at this size of this. <laughs> So, this is my first time stepping into this year's brand new maze. Here we go. <laughs> oh boy, it's hot in here. But yeah, this is survival games. As I mentioned, it's basically made up of these long containers going around the edge of the maze. Um, same over there. But yeah, just being in here gives you a good um, kind of scale as to how big this thing is going to be. Because in the past, when Fall had done container mazes, um, like My Bloody Valentine, Experiment 10, you've only been within the containers. Whereas this year, obviously you're gonna be able to go into this massive middle area. And look how far I've just walked even then. So this is all gonna be maze space. Everything out here is gonna be maze space. And then there's more containers down here, just behind me. So you're gonna be able to go into these as well. And then there's more being built over here. So, so exciting. now finished up just having a little sight tour of the brand new maze oh my god it's so exciting that we're having a container maze at this year's fright nights and yeah obviously we're about to go and film the brand new trailer for it we then headed up to the top layer of the dome and basically created a fake behind the scenes tv studio um so the idea for the video was that the contestant was you know coming out of the backstage bit getting ready to go on the tv show which was survival games um, and there was like a presenter. It was it was a really fun shoot to work on. Oh, nice! There's the t-shirt. Crew member. Work on the game show, mate. So we've had custom t-shirts for this one. But just look at the location where we're shooting. You can see like where we are. Yeah, we are over in that corner. So if you ever come into Fort Park, if you look over at the arcade, just above that is where we're filming the survival game at teaser. Very cool. That's crazy. Today, it's 38 degrees outside. Insanely so, yeah, hot. Yeah, All the hot day. air is just coming up. But we got some fans, not too bad. But yeah, time to get to work. It was very hot, like scorching hot, but we could spend the whole day in there creating what we wanted because we could black it out easily so we could shoot in the daytime. Um, and we created like a, a hot set, so like we created like a fake behind the scenes of a TV show. So we had like loads of branding everywhere. We moved in like a computer and like a, made a whole production office in there which was really cool and then we had like a green screen to fake when she went through the curtain to then fake an audience so we've spent a few hours up here on the top level of the dome and the setup is now complete so i'm going to give you a quick little set tour before we go and grab the actors and start filming so this is kind of like the behind the scenes area oh hello mate we need it on set, mate. <laughs> we need it on set. nice little park vibes fan of air so yeah, we're actually um, well, showing you, just come you from the stage. this is technically the stage. So 
Look at this. Here we are. We're on set now. We'll take you down to the other cord, uh, other end. Because um, this is where the video will be starting. Um, but the cool thing about this is this is literally a 360 set. Kieran can technically point the camera in any direction he wants and it will fit the theme of the video. Um, but yeah, this is where we'll start. Sure, we'll um, come out of this door. We'll come out of this oh, door. actually, we'll have a little cameo first. Yeah, I'm going to get in this one. Yeah. I like your t-shirt, by the way. Yeah, we'll go out. The t-shirts are on. Yeah, everyone's all good. Yeah. I've just got to check that everything's going nicely on stage. All right, so uh, we'd come out of this door. Yeah. We're going to come out of this door. I'll be following her. So we've come down this. Down this corridor. We've got all sorts of things in here. We've got a little Easter egg. Yeah, it's a very big Easter egg, to be fair, but we've got. 2022. And then it's the date that the video's hopefully going on. Fingers crossed. Uh, then we've got loads of posters, got stage this way. Uh, here's some content. Some social made. feed. She made like last night, so it's it's just basically there. like a producer's desk where they're kind of going through the show and checking so everything. We've got the good. audience here, and we've got the logo. Look, this nice little. Look at that. And we've got just some shots of the studio. It's basically where Good someone movies. would be sat making the show. Um, little another little Easter egg in there. Yeah, that's one of my little mugs. Uh, and then we've got loads, loads of posters. Like just here. looks like a kind of film set along with this kind of wooden um, board. Notice how the ceiling is fully blacked out as well. We didn't want to show like the dome ceiling. We've got loads which is of just uh, through here. Doesn't look great. Random bits of colourful tapes. It's just a production yeah. place. And then we've got the hot set. I'm sure you That's guys have, would have seen these two uh, little Easter eggs. Cool sign here. Looks good there. Yeah. Like, don't go in the arena, basically. Yeah, uh, basically the arena is probably like. Yeah, technically the arena would be there, and then this is kind of like the main set where we've got basically just left our kit lying about, but it kind of fits the theme as I said. It's like a 360 set. Uh, got some mics test, test, ready one, to go. Two. And a really cool feature of this video is this live preview which we're going to have. Um, basically, if we get it turned on. So yeah, basically, we're going to have like a live preview. Hey, oh my God, that's so weird. Um, so yeah, basically, because it's a film set, there is going to be a camera on the contestant, which I'll be manning. Um, basically, as if it's ready to film that character going onto stage. That's so weird to see. And another thing with this is we're trying to do everything as practically as we can so that we don't have to, you know, mask screens, etc. Yeah. Et we're trying to make it as real as possible because, yeah, it does look better. And then we've got obviously stage this stage way. Stage this way. I really like this little floor detail. Nice little floor. There's a lot of footprints on it because, you know, there's been many contestants before that. Um, and then you would have like a, there's going to be like a blind and white light, which is currently the green screen. Uh, so she'll go onto the stage. It kind of looks like a just we just wanted like an overwhelming light as if the spotlight has hit this character and then yeah the video will well we'll cut this scene here and get a reverse shot showing like the audience her view um, as she looks out uh, but yeah we're ready to film it's looking really nice so we're gonna head down uh, and meet our actors bring them up here and a brief them through everything shooting on the gimbal as well it's gotta be a smooth shot one yeah. take one the happy days happy days let's go and meet our actors Ready? 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 Went very well, didn't yeah, it? it uh, we finished pretty early today, so yeah. the time is 11 p.m. I'm not sure how, because it feels like 8 p.m. But it, it went really felt well. like a really quick um, shoot. I, yeah, I love this set because like it's just cool. Like it's messy, but it's like purposefully messy. Yeah. Um, the shots with the green screen, they went really nice. Like they went really well. Uh, and yeah, everyone absolutely smashed it as always. In the audience of the Survivor Games like screen content, like, there's like a fake audience that we created. We actually filmed with all of the actors that we were using up against a green screen um, and we created like fake backdrops as if it was like a big group call. There's a few little familiar faces in there. I managed to get a cameo as did Jack, which is cool. Um, but that was then put for a lot of processing and VFX to make it look futuristic and like it was an audience of a game show. At this point, all of the Survival Games containers had been delivered to the park and it really put into perspective just how big 
survival games was going to be. But yeah, unfortunately I couldn't spend too long at the park on that day because myself, Kieran and Archie headed straight up to Warwick Castle to film a Dragon Slayer event. <laughs> and yeah, this wasn't a one-off thing. The entire months of literally July and August, we were just so busy with not only the Fright Night shoots and everything we were doing for Fright Nights, but we were still working with our other partners like Chessington, Warwick Castle, other Merlin attractions. We literally we spent the whole of like July and August like on shoots every day, editing every day, like no sleep. When I say we were busy throughout these months, we were really, really busy. Hi, I'm Archie. I'm a music producer and composer. I started working with Thought Park uh, mainly for events audio and also helping uh, Kieran and Jack with their uh, trailers and marketing campaigns for various different projects for Thought Park. Uh, so I've been involved in all sorts of events such as Carnival, Park Vibes and Fright Nights. In 2022, I moved in with the boys and we've got a great working relationship. I do lots of their music and audio, uh, but they were super, super busy over September and I was also doing my own audio projects. Now at this point, Archie Stephen, Arch Nemesis, had been working with the park quite a bit on some of the event soundtracks and stuff. And we were really pushing for the park to once again use him for Fright Nights, which of course means he was gonna find out the lineup very soon. And we spoke to the marketing department we were like is there any charge rather than you just sending over like an nda and like a document with it, all of the lineup can we tell him so myself and kieran surprised him whilst he was eating his dinner one night and basically just told him the entire fright nights lineup it's always been a massive passion of mine to work on fright nights and especially uh, in collaboration with the boys as well. I was always looking at their work and getting really excited, so the time finally came. Unfortunately, the time came when I was halfway through my dinner. My hair's very tight and stuff. Oh, is it? <laughs> oh, not with this <laughs> The terminal. And it's an experience. Sick. An audio experience. Really? We were kind of keeping this a secret from them because we were obviously under NDA and he was busy working on all of his other audio stuff. So we didn't really see a whole lot of them during these months. We'd be getting back in the early hours of the morning um, and we'd briefly say hello to him when we'd like all wake up. But apart from that, he was doing his own thing and we were doing our own thing. But from this day, we all kind of fused together and boy oh boy, the dream team was made. Being able to work with Archie on the, the music and the soundtracks while I'm editing the videos and if we have an idea for a video, he can create the soundtrack. He can, it, it, it just works well and we all have a very different skill set, but all have the same skill set. It's, it's, it's nice just to work together and I think the best things come when the three of us do part heads together. They told me all about the information and the exciting lineup for Fright Nights. 2022. And from there, I was able to receive an official brief and was able to also get cracking on the audio for Friday Nights 2022. Good morning. So back for another week of shooting. Today we have our final main video shoot, Amity High versus Lycanthorpe. It's the last day of the, the teaser shoots. Mm -hmm. uh, we're shooting Amity High Lycan today and we're also shooting a little bit of Terminal today. This day we were filming Amity again. It feels like we've filmed so many Amity trailers over the years, but we were filming Amity for, for its graduation year and Terminal, which of course got delayed from the other night. So the idea today is to go and set up like a fake graduation set. I think we're going to try and use the marquee um, and basically just dress the stage. Um, to look like um, a graduation kind of ceremony. And then uh, we're gonna do some filming with the lichens kind of crashing that scene. Um, and then we might film them on the bus as well later on. Mm. Sad day it's uh, the last day, uh, but it's not the last day really, it's just a lot of things to film. The other exciting stuff starts to kick in, such as the actual maze construction, um, such as survival games, which hopefully we're gonna pop over to today. So yeah, although that side of it's uh, coming to an end, 
there's still plenty more to come and I'm very excited. Now Amity we always struggle with because obviously the scare zone has been at the park for so long. How do we further expand the story of Amity and make it interesting for viewers when we announce that Amity is returning again? So this year obviously the team came up with the idea of making this year Amity and Lycan's graduation year. So we kind of took this and ran with it for the teasers and we thought why not film our very own graduation ceremony for Amity. And yeah this was actually filmed on location at the park within the marquee. We set up like a microphone and a stage and created an audience. Fun fact, myself and the marketing team actually had to sit in the audience and kind of fill out. Um, so yeah, it looked a little bit busier than it actually was. A lot of the actors that we use for this Amity shoot have performed as Amity or Lycan performers at previous Fright Nights, so they absolutely loved getting that costume back on and kind of performing. Callie Cassandra Nubbins finally graduated from Amity High. And action! And then, yeah, of course, the Lycans turn up on their bus and basically crash the party, as they always do, those pesky Lycans. <laughs> And lichens. And cut there. And then yeah, after that we headed back over here to Survival Games. If we're not filming a trailer in the month of August, we'll most likely be at the site of the new maze, just looking around and documenting it all. Where are we going? Survival Games. Taking oh, a second yes. little visit. Well, Jack's had a few visits now, but it's my second time here. And I believe there's a new a new piece of the puzzle. Yeah, the roof seems to have gone up. So the reason we're going over today is because we need to get a drone in the air to basically help the people that are making it kind of figure out queue layouts and just making sure that everything's going to fit all right. So we get a nice aerial uh, picture of it uh, so they can have a lot of the plans. Yeah, exciting. big business trip, but I'm just so excited to see it again. But the park's closed now, so yeah, happy days. Let's go and see survival games. We are currently behind Swarm um, at the new site of Survival Games, which is the new Fright Nights attraction for this year, which is exciting. Um, on its third day of construction? On its, what day is it, Thursday? It's technically its fourth day. And what's happening in this pre-show? You will be separated, you'll be put in a cell, and you will be taken, taken away. Separated individually or? Individually. At random times, just taken. Completely random times and taken away. So, so thank you queuing up yeah. for your friends to have a laugh. You can think again because you're going to be split within the first two minutes of entering this building. Cool. All this one here. Oh my god. The arena and it is completely free flow. Uh, and there's doors that separate, move around. Oh my god. Yeah, the arena's huge. That's insane. Yeah. You, there are going to be some people that go through this and go through it quite quickly if they're lucky. But then there's you can be in here, here for so ages. Up into three sections where the door. Is there a tunnel that side? No. There's not a tunnel this side. Okay. There's a sliding door here that basically will be shut, so people will be in this area, and until the actor wants to, you'll be going around. Because like obviously there's loads of dead ends, it's all sorts of things. Yeah. And then there's a scare holes through the walls. Yeah. Um, there's loads of dead ends, it's all sorts of things. There's scare holes through the walls, and then when this door is open. You then go to the next section, and there's another door there, which lets you into the finale. Okay. You come down into the last container. Here there will be six arches, which I've taped will glow out, so it'll like be facing down. 
and then on every arch there is three air effects. Jeez. Which, you know, it's a bit like what trailers is, but just a lot more. Yeah. And then we have the big Survival Games logo here. Yes. And then... You've run out of it, Running out here. Get them out. Big. Wow. And that's oh, well, thank you very, very much for, for giving us a tour at this early point. We'll be popping in to keep up on the construction. But wow, very exciting. Thank you. And then we had our very final trailer filming of the year. We had Terminal. But we're now on to our second shoot of the day, which is for The Terminal, which is, of course, a shoot that we set up about a week ago at the top of the dome. Um, but today is the day we're actually shooting it. No actors in this one, so it's just myself, Kieran, and James. And yeah, we're just having a little break now. Gonna go and eat a Nando's, because uh, we're hungry. It's currently 10 p.m. Uh, and yeah, so we had like the Oktoberfest tasting earlier this morning, so that was like the last thing we ate. Uh, which was, Haven't eaten which was all, great, all day, basically. Beautiful. And then that's, the teaser's done. That is, that's a wrap on the teaser, which is crazy. Oh. Yeah, let's go and get some food. Terminal was an interesting one for us to film because it's an audio driven experience. So we knew that from the offset. So we instantly thought anything that we make visually is going to technically oversell it. Because Terminal is an audio experience, obviously you're literally just sat in the dark, but we didn't want to put out a trailer with just a black screen. So we did a POV camera sort of angle, created like a set above the dome that looked quite futuristic, um, but it was still very audio driven. It's time for the final shot of the lineup videos. Here we go. Finally, after months and months of planning and pre-production and then weeks and weeks of filming, we were finally wrapped on all of the Fright Nights teasers. So on the 23rd of August, once again, I was over here at Survival Games just checking out some of the new construction that had been taking place on the maze. What time is it? 13, 7, no, what time is it? Oh, <laughs> time to, you know what we're doing this area, we're doing it today. So it's been a few days now, about five days or so since we were last here on site for the new maze. So we're gonna check out what's going on over here. Very excited, apparently the floor's gone in, so excited to see that. Solid. Yeah. <laughs> Bang. It feels like hairspray. Yeah, it is. Just like I've not seen. Oh. I should have literally done like that. <laughs> wow. It's so big. The place where time stands still is what I'm calling this. Yeah. The time is now. You see that? Nine o'clock. Nine o'clock. Yeah, <laughs> we just oh been chat God. stood there chatting for two hours. That's mad, it literally feels like we were there for like <laughs> half hour, 45 minutes. Just stood there chatting with them for two hours, bless them. But yeah, survival games. Looking brilliant. Now at this point I'd be going live with every single announcement and teaser video that was going out. Um, it was so much fun kind of watching everyone's reactions in the live chat. But at this point, none of the new experiences had been announced. So Death Doors, Terminal and Survival Games. So it was a really, really exciting point knowing that the next three announcements were all going to be very big ones. And I remember the buzz around the Fright Nights community was so, so big. Everyone was so excited to find out what the new things would be.
So the date is the 31st of August, which means the Survival Games gets announced to the public today. That's right, Kieran's at home finalizing the trailer that we've made for it, but I'm here on site and oh my god, so much has happened. Loads and loads of walls have gone up. Parts of scenic work has started, like they started painting up some of the walls. But oh my god, it's just so cool to be in there now with walls up. Like, I'm actually getting lost walking through. I'm gonna take the camera through and show you how it's looking in its current state. The trailer was due to go out at 8 p.m. I was obviously preparing for my live stream. Kieran, however, was finishing the edit on that actual video. And that's it. I finally just submitted the last teaser of, uh, of all the teasers that are for Front Nights this year. It's been a crazy, crazy month. I've so much editing all day, every day, filming most days, 12 hour days, all of that. I've been editing right up until the tea. It's currently. 7.31 and the announcement's supposed to go out at 8. So I've been cutting it fine today. The sound design is something I'm very proud of in these videos. They're like, it's fully custom sound design. All of them, they're all like from scratch uh, sound designs. I think I've got over like 300 sound effects used within these videos. It's kind of crazy uh, and it's been a crazy month. That was such a fun live stream. I remember how I had my own Survival Games t-shirt on. I had loads of posters in the room. And yeah, it was awesome to see everyone's reactions to survival games. Ladies and gentlemen, our brand new maze for Friday Nights 2022, survival games. And then yeah, as soon as that live stream ended, I got straight to packing because the next day, we were flying to Florida for 10 days. And we're literally going away tomorrow uh, in like 12 hours flying to Florida. So I haven't even packed, so it's just it's on the ground. That's what the teaser's done. Uh, we can move on now to the main content for the, for the event and the creation of the content for the events like Legacy and uh, the screens, many more shoots to come, but uh, yeah, it's been great. We all left our packing to the very last minute, so we packed, got a few hours sleep and jumped on a flight over to Florida and oh my god, we had the best time. We were able to just unwind a little bit after months and months of hard work and a few weeks of very intensive filming schedules. We had as much of a relax as you can have in Florida. Like we were still staying up until like 2 a.m. every night at Halloween Horror Nights, but this was literally just inspiring us even more because Halloween Horror Nights is one of the best Halloween events in the world. So we took so many ideas and inspirations from Halloween Horror Nights and we came back from that holiday feeling inspired and ready to jump straight back into the Fright Nights grind. So we landed back from Florida and five hours later, we were back here at Fort Park. So we are back after a 12 day trip over to Orlando with obviously Kieran and the two Archies. We've now returned. To Fort Park and it is all steam ahead with Fright Nights now. We literally landed back like five hours ago and we're back here. We're already here, the grind has started. We're having a little meeting with uh, UVE today discussing mainly content for survival games and what kind of stuff we're going to do and obviously we're going to have a little nosy around and see what construction has been taking place um, on survival games and around the rest of the park. So obviously the last time I was here, walls are just like going up in like the arena section of survival games. Um, but that was it really. Kieran hasn't been here with any walls up. I didn't get to come here because I was too I was locked in before we went. So I'm very excited for this. So this what is we're it's just weird, like we literally were on the mummy today. <laughs> That's insane. Because we haven't slept, like this is still the same day for us. We're yeah, crazy. In Orlando riding the mummy. And loads of other rides. <laughs> Uh, surrounded by Halloween Horror Nights mazes and now we're here at Fort Park checking out their brand new maze. But yeah, I'm very excited to see what will hopefully be a load of construction. Oh, 
Oh, that scared me. Yeah. Yeah, we started off by having a little meeting with UVE about some of the content that we were going to be making for within survival games, such as the CCTV screens, the pre-show video, all of that stuff. We had a little meeting with them and then we headed on an entire park walk. The park was closed, so we literally just walked ourselves around um, and saw all of the progress that had been happening whilst we were away in Florida. So survival games is looking very cool indeed. I can't believe how much has been done in there. It's insane. And yeah, we just obviously strolled over and saw Legacy had gone up. But yeah, we've now headed over into Oktoberfest for the first time this year. Obviously, we've been away whilst this event kind of got kicked off. We had to do a lot of work beforehand to make sure we were ready to go. But yeah, we're now heading round to go and check out Death's Doors. Obviously, the brand new scare zone for this year, um, which is underneath Nemesis Inferno's lift too. But we've heard that quite a bit's been done in it. So we're going to have a little wander through, aren't we? Yeah. I love these as well. Yeah, these are very nice. Massive. Very big indeed. <laughs> Jesus. This is like another scale for scare zones. Yeah. <laughs> That's insane. So if I was to knock. Hey! <laughs> That's gonna be really cool with actors. So I guess you're gonna start in this area and make your way around here. They've really used the space nicely though. Oh wow. That's cool. Very cool. And obviously oh. these are the door frames that we used in our set. They are. They've been taken and moved back over here where they were originally made for. So, cool. so I guess you, you can have like an actor run in on all of these doors. Same with these. Wow. This is sick. We bumped into Martin, who's an absolute legend, who was showing us some of the new Amity lighting that he'd been working on and some of the stuff he'd been doing down at the Crows of Morkin Meadow. And yeah, we were just so pumped for Fright Nights at this point. Got new lighting, new speakers being put in. Oh, gorgeous. Preparations for Terminal, which obviously isn't quite here yet. Is where it will be going. We made our way over to Amity. We weren't even going to come over it, but Martin was saying our stuff has happened. And it has. The bus and stage are in, baby. The stage is bigger. Look at that. And he showed us some concept art of like these big towers on either side with loads of lights. Oh, happy days. No, it's great. It's, it's not really changed much the past couple of years, so it's nice for Yeah. I'm going to get in like a nice little overhaul. Sick. Oh, it's exciting. Tonight, we are heading towards Amity and Lycanthorpe to check out the rehearsals for the dance. Because? I'm very excited about because I'm doing the audio for it this year. I'm super proud of Archie that he got to be able to work on the Amity soundtrack this year. I know he's always wanted to work on it. This is a project he's wanted to work on literally for as long as Amity has been at Friday Nights. He's recreated the Amity dance music before. He is a massive fan of that scare zone. I've been a fan of the zone uh, for so, so long. A huge fan of the zone. So it was amazing uh, to sort of put my own stamp on, on this show that I've watched and loved for many years. I firstly sat down with Emily, uh, manager from Ent's team, and she told me all about the amazing vision that she had and some of the songs that she wanted to incorporate within this soundtrack. So I went away and realized that the show was sort of split up into two sections. So the first section was all new audio uh, for the amazing dancers to do their performance to, and the second section was all the classic hits that all of the big fans of Amity will know and love. And now that he had the opportunity to create the official dance show audio, he wanted to make it as perfect as possible. So we headed into this rehearsal session and he basically was taking notes of every little beat and like movement that the dancers are doing. And you want to get it in person? I want to get it perfect. So if there's any parts in which their choreography really has huge moves and moments. Pizzazz. Pizzazz. You know, when they're doing a big 
big, big moment. Stuff. That's what I want to capitalize on and maybe bring some sound effects and bring the energy and ramp up the dynamics in those sections. So that's why we're heading here today to work out where to do that. Emma Sport is notepad along. He's going to watch the rehearsals and just jot down all of the moments where he thinks he can add a little bit more in the audio. And we're just here to watch it and like film the rehearsals and also just to give it knowledge for when we actually do film it. In a Absolutely. Weeks. Well, like one week. Insane. Right, let's go and check it out. Let's go, come join us. So it goes. Dum 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 dum
Yeah. That's, that's insane. What a setup that is. That's daunting. Like, it's intimidating. I say to say Amis, that's the best Amis he's ever mm. looked. Like that, this is going to be the biggest year of Amis so far. Oh my god. I think the hay might have arrived. Hey, where would you think that? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so excited for what's going to be around this corner. Yo! Oh, there she is. It's, that's actually really weird that we were talking about that earlier. Then in the evening, we met up with some of the Survival Games cast who hadn't yet actually been over to the maze. So we got to bring them over here for the very first time and they got to see the attraction that they'd be working in over Fright Night. So they were all really excited. We had the task of creating screen content for the Survival Games. So throughout the attraction, there is various screens in the checkpoints that show like CCTV from the attraction, they show statistics, they show all sorts of different things. Just a few at a time, we basically filmed these outrageous death scenes where we were just brainstorming and coming up with the weirdest ways in which people could basically be killed in this maze. And we were just having so much fun filming it with these actors. They were absolutely brilliant. They were fully going for it. And yeah, that footage turned out really, really nicely. And if you head through Survival Games and look at any of the CCTV screens, you will have seen it. And action! And cut there. <laughs> Sick. So, the time is just gone half ten and we've finished filming some of the content within survival games. I've had a great shoot this evening, uh, a few hours just going around, uh, getting the kill cam footage which is going to be played throughout the checkpoints. Um, and yeah, we got, we got pretty adventurous in how we got the kills, as you'll see probably in the attraction. Last year, like when we were working on trailers, we were like there with the whole team, like in the late hours of the evening but this is quite a unique one because we've been filming in here obviously with marketing and everyone but they've all gone and we're just we're just here we're just we've here we've been left to lock up which uh, <laughs> is a very scary responsibility to have but yeah it's cool we're making the content for like the, the screens around the checkpoints but also um we're making stuff like at the moment i'm working on like a thing for this tv here so this tv will have like the pre-show on it which is like a, a voiceover like kind of scary but kind of upbeat still the plays while you're in these cages i believe so yeah you'll watch it from in there which is going well we've got, yeah. we got we've got seven days <laughs> until the first run of the event so yeah we haven't got too much time but we actually found something very cool out in this room there's basically a metal bar that uv have put in which um i think the actor can like i think that, that they are hanging from it as in like they're chained up yeah. as they're seen but they can like you should use it as like a monkey bar so the actors are kind of hanging from this bar but just standing on this stage you get an amazing view of the entire maze look at that it gives you a good sense of scale as to just how big this place is i also really like the sort of like so it's not a roof on this attraction, but like there's like physical theming, like yeah. here they've got like the pipes in the pipe room. I really love like the details of like some overhead stuff, it's really nice. Oh my god, that mannequin gets me every time. But yeah, we've got so much content in here just from different um, views. There's a cruel tunnel, oh I forgot about you. There's a cruel tunnel in here. And yeah, we've just been going in and out of this area, getting different shots. And of course, you've got the sliding doors which we've incorporated into the videos. So you can literally just change the route of this arena as the actors please. But yeah, very successful evening filming. As Kieran said, we've got about seven days now before um, fake nights, which is when all of the mazes pretty much have to be running. Um, and basically myself, management, all of the actors will go through each other's mazes and just kind of check them out for the first time. So happy days, a lot of work to do but uh, it's been a fun one today, very fun one. And well, we just need to go and lock up survival games.
So it's currently uh, 3 a.m. I've been working on the survival game screen content for uh, various days now. Um, playing with different things, seeing what I prefer, see what works. Uh, many different layouts now. Um, but I finally got a layout that I like. I've spent a lot of time creating custom things. I've created a little map of the maze, but like it's not actually a map of the maze, it's like based on the maze, but it, it's made to look bigger and there's like contestants roaming around. There's like sections where it shows like contestants being eliminated. I really like working on stuff for attractions. So this is a, like a dream come true to be able to work on stuff for attractions. I'm really taking my time with it and uh, putting a lot of effort into it. Uh, but yeah, it's 3 a.m. I've been up since about 5 a.m. every night recently. Just we, we've got like a week now until press starts. So we're working on Survivor Games content. Uh, we've got stuff to create for the park uh, to open with. There's a lot to still make. Um, it's a great time. Um, just wanted to document this. And uh, yeah, hopefully tomorrow I'll get all of the screens of Survivor Games done, pre show. Friday nights was drawing even closer at this point and once again we were back on the park just looking around and kind of planning out what other content we needed to film but it would have been rude not to have a look within Survivor Games at the latest construction. Back again boys. Back again going down the same path <laughs> that many times. Well actually Archie hasn't been down it. No this That's is very nice exciting. For me. Heading over to Survival Games. Looking to it. Gonna re-document it, have a few chats over there. As Kieran was just saying, it's the best time of the year. Really the sun's is. setting. The sunset. It's kind of warm still. It's like autumnal atmosphere. You know, yeah. it's just, it's just before Chill in the air. The the yeah. Let's head over to Survival Games. You excited then? This is your first time going in there? Actually, I'm like feeling the cold chill. It's not freezing, but it feels a little bit colder. It feels like a fright nice evening. The sun's going down. Mate, and it's I'm the best summer in. of the year. Hoodie and shorts. Hoodie and shorts. The best aesthetic. <laughs> so nice. But yeah, really looking forward to seeing this one for, for the first time. There's a lot of hype. I've heard a lot of good things. Um, so yeah, it should be great. Oh yes. Let's head, in. Let's head over. There it is. Oh, I'm actually scared walking through it. Really I'm really scared walking through it. <laughs> This is horrible. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. What are you actually doing there, Jay? I'm applying liquid latex to fabric so it gives it more of a skin feel than it would touch it. It's funny because we went into Survival Games when it was bright, sunny outside and we came out when it was pitch black. That's how long we spent just geeking out and chatting to UVE who are obviously designing Survival Games. What do you think, Nem? Wow, stunning. Like, really, really, really cool. I got lost many times. <laughs> I was slowly walking through it, so I, can, I can't imagine how hectic. Um, I think it's going to be a right sensory overload. I think. And where are we going now? Now we're heading over to South Plaza. Go and visit um, the high schools. We're going to visit like Thorpe High and Amity High and check out the dancing. We headed over to Amity to see the latest rehearsals and oh my God, it was looking amazing. Seeing dress runs when uh, the cast and crew were performing in Amity was really, really special. And honestly, it was a dream come true hearing uh, the music that I've been putting together uh, and watching these incredibly talented performers do their thing, it was mind-blowing. I'll never get over just seeing it for the first time as we turned that corner uh, from near the Dodgems and just seeing Amity lit up. It was beautiful. This has never had this sort of atmosphere. Look at the glow. <laughs> you said about atmosphere. It's literally closed and there's still it's some of our atmosphere. There's no audio, <laughs> but the atmosphere. glow of this zone is so exciting. It's daunting. <laughs> That's insane, and seeing stealth in like the same colours, oh my god. Yeah.
That was insane. That was insane. <laughs> the cast were very much in their groove. They pretty much knew the entire dance at this point. And Martin and the team were just programming the lighting and it was looking the best Amity had ever looked. So we were super hyped for Amity this year. The brand new lighting that Martin had done and it, it, was, it blew us away. Like we were so excited at this point that we then got to walk down the crows and see how much that had changed for this year. Yo, Lang. I remember it was so funny seeing the sign that we'd scuffly built for the Crows of Morgan Meadow trailer video actually in the attraction. Oh, it's there, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> no way is that on our thing. Oh, my God, it is. Oh, sh. It is. We made this. <laughs> really? So it was. That is mine and Kieran's the handiwork. Just this bit. Yeah. With none of this. Because like, that was hanging up there. So, me and Jack, like, in like literally three minutes, just built it, put that. A few drilled screws. In, drilled it to the back. No way. <laughs> don't even need that for a screw hanging out We the built this. Is that and Jack special? <laughs> yeah. Because it was just this, but we needed to stand up for a shot. So we just found these two posts and just drilled them in. It's like getting the most sketchy thing ever. I don't know how it's still standing. So I guess technically this was the first ever Fright Nights prop that we'd built that's actually being used in an attraction. I don't think it lasted very long because they realised it was built by us and they actually took it apart and properly put it together. But it was very funny seeing it for the first time. Uh, Playboy. <laughs> I that's can't huge. believe it. That's actually amazing. <laughs> really, are you done with it? No, nah, thank you. Why is it never? No, Jenny, why isn't it hanging there? Because it actually looks better. Like <laughs> the year before, I'd done one soundtrack which played throughout the entirety of the Morkin Meadow zone. This year, we really wanted to delve deeper into the story and the lore of the crows because it's so rich and really exciting. We started by splitting the crows of Morkin Meadow into three sections the beginning, the middle, and the end. And this was true in terms of the audio as well. So at the start, as guests enter near Saw Alive into Morkin Meadow, they're greeted by a voiceover, which is a narrative piece of audio, which explains the story of the crows told by the old woman character who you can also find in the marketing campaigns. Dear diary, it's been a year since my son vanished on that cold autumn night. As guests venture deeper into the scare zone, uh, there's a slightly more ambient version of the previous soundtrack that plays and it's a lot lighter and a lot less heavy. And in the third and final section of The Crows of Morkin Meadow, I decided to make that third part a really scary and dark, very ominous soundtrack. Uh, I sped up the tempo, I used a lot more bassy instruments and focused a lot more on percussion in order to emphasise the danger and threat that the crows face and hopefully get people running, hop, skipping and jumping out of the zone. It was great to be able to break that zone down with audio and also collaborate with such amazing people such as Martin who really brought that area to life. Um, it's so cool to be able to tell a story, uh, not just visually but also through music. That was an amazing uh, project that I'm super proud of. I think that was one of my favourite nights of, of the year, just seeing things coming together and like being blown away by things I knew. Like We knew that Amity was coming back, but when we went and watched it and saw the whole new production, the cast, the music, blew us away. Legacy. Sleepless nights, overnight turnarounds on demos, what an absolutely crazy project to work on. Now at this point, Legacy took over myself and the boys' lives, especially Archie and Kieran. They were putting so many hours into Legacy. I remember I'd go out on another shoot. I'd get back and these boys would look absolutely drained from just working on Legacy around the clock. Legacy was a really big project for us um, that we only found out at the last minute that we were involved in. Um, so we knew about Legacy being part of the lineup for a long time. We chose not to make a video for it, so we, we just ex excluded it from the lineup. It was like a surprise thing that was announced later in the month. We got back um, in middle of September, and we were told that Legacy was having a screen this year and that the audio needed to be created all within a matter of days. So it was a very last minute decision that we were brought in on, um, and obviously we were very excited about it. It's like the dream to work on something like that and to, to create content for a screen. Uh, for a show is absolutely something that's been on my bucket list forever. So obviously I jumped at the opportunity. Um, little did I know how much, how much work I was getting myself in for, but it was a lot of fun. So with selecting the tracks for Legacy, we didn't want to delve into using existing attraction soundtracks because some of the general public may not resonate with them or particularly understand why they're playing. Uh, so we wanted existing songs, maybe some songs that people might know and love, uh, to represent each attraction that was on the lineup for Fright Nights 2022. 
This proved quite difficult and we delved into a crazy amount of music. So we've been uh, yeah, we're selecting some songs today. We've spent most of the day on Spotify or YouTube, yeah. just looking at songs. Putting our feelers out, seeing. We, we've honestly found every in, in every dark corner of the internet, we have found Halloween music that is decent and exciting and hopefully works for a fire show. It's been very fun. I've definitely found some nice little songs that I'll just be playing from now on, to be fair, we found anyway. Bangers. We found if, um, if the Trick or Treat song ever makes it in, then... Good. That's the best song ever made. We literally just found <laughs> that and we were bouncing in the kitchen like that. That is such a tune. But yeah, Nemi's like obviously mixing it when they're like, we're just bouncing songs off each other and hopefully mm -hmm. there'll be a big fire show next week out of it. <laughs> Boy, <laughs> imagine. Yeah, like honestly, we've, so I've made drafty mixes today, but soon to come, hopefully, you never know, there could be a real version of these songs that like, <laughs> actually put together soon. Like in a week. In seven days, they'll basically be blasting off. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I better get working on yeah, well, Legacy. Yeah, well, see ya. See ya. Yeah. It was awesome to be able to work on Legacy with Kieran. Because we live together, it was super, super efficient uh, just to be able to bounce some ideas off each other. And uh, because he was doing the screen content and I was doing the audio, if there was anything audio-based that he would need me to reflect, uh, that he was putting on the screen, I could add those sound effects in and that could become a more cohesive and uh, coherent project. We've been working extremely hard, uh, tirelessly, on getting this ready and I've just actually hit the maximum number of... Uh, Tracks, layers. Yeah, maximum layers number of channels, layers yes. that I can actually put on a logic file. Um, so in short terms, Legacy is busy uh, in a good way. And uh, we've just come up with a cool drop oh, for survival honestly. games, haven't we? we got, I came up here just to literally get one sound effect like mm -hmm. tweaked and we're like adding the lock the back in, you know, because yep. it's, it's, it's the Donny. We're splicing him in throughout so everyone knows that he runs the show. But then we thought, we got like this original voice there, we thought it says like fire and stuff, so we'll add it into survival games because wow. there's like a finale where it's like, Simulated gun effect. Absolutely. Uh, so and there's fire, and flames as well. Yeah, so we thought, oh, we should we add fine? And then, oh man, let's add a little gun sound effect in. Oh man. So survive this. Uh, the survival games drop is cool because the first section is I'm a survivor. It's a remix, and then the actual drop, um, it's you think it's one song, but it's not. I've actually spliced two different drops together, so you get a different drop. It's like a dubstep drop, really hard version, different to the original. But on this, it kind of goes. Do, 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 do and then comes in, so it has a little pause, and, I th and Kieran was like, why don't you add like a, a gun sound effect in there? So we have done, and it sounds insane. It's take a, it's a, it's a, take a, a listen to this. It's a, it's a. Yeah! And then we just know that that paired with the visuals, surely that's gonna be crazy, bro. As of right now, 48 hours till the video deadline. <laughs> well, mm, 72 if I'm being generous, but. Look at me, I'm taking all my boxes off. He's, yeah. Long, busy. long one, long busy. one. Busy, but we're making great progress, aren't we? And it's going to be a great show. So basically the idea of Legacy was to show, it was like the locksmith unlocking all the different doors to all the different attractions and then a big mashup at the end and a big finale. Um, so that then meant we had to make content out of nowhere for each attraction. Like everything that was in Legacy was not created for that purpose. It was just a lucky coincidence that it all worked with it, so we had to create things from the ground up. There was a whole like door sequence at the beginning and in the like, towards the end that Jack worked on. It really helped like bring you into the story, um, and it had like all sorts of Easter eggs flying past it, and it worked perfectly with the audio. So yeah, Jack was working away on that all the time while I was working on creating each individual attraction sections and trying to make them unique, colourful, engaging, and realistically working with nothing. So it was like we had a few days to work on this project and create it from nothing with nothing. So it was stressful. We were up pretty much 24 seven. It is just gone up to 4 a.m. And that's another not a legacy done. That's another 16 hour shift that I've put into it. Um, today, it's been a long one. I uh, haven't left the desk really, as you can tell. I think I'm at about 40 to 50% through now. We're currently two days out now. Uh, one, one or two days out. Uh, so yeah, it needs to be done. So early morning tomorrow get a few hours sleep and I'll be back at this desk. Legacy was tied together thematically through the use of a radio that Jack was working on with lots of really cool visual effects. To complement this with the audio, there was lots of static sound effects and fine tuning with the radio. And as the radio scans through, there was lots of availability for me to hide some Easter eggs 
of song choices inside the soundtrack. Some of my favourites are some classic Friday Night's tunes such as Lou Reed's Perfect Day <laughs> and The Platters Only You which are songs that me and the boys love and also Friday Night's fans may pick up on if they hear it in the radio. <laughs> Also, Playboy Carter gets represented as well, so that's cool. It's 2.41 a.m. on the 27th, and uh, yeah, I'm just cooking out for the day on Legacy. Uh, so I started working on it at about 9, 10 a.m. this morning, uh, and I've been like non-stop, haven't left my desk other than to eat uh, a couple of meals. Um, haven't left my desk like, all day, uh, which has been crazy. Um, just locking in, trying to get as much done as I can. I'd say I'm at about 80% of the way there now, so I've got all the attractions done, uh, I just need to fill in some gaps at the end and then do the big like compilation at the end and then I need to go through and fine tune it. Um, but because like we're looking at a deadline literally tomorrow, um, I've been just locked in today, uh, really, really working on it. It is quite hard, I can't lie, like filling a 10 minute timeline of just ideas and content that I haven't actually shot yet. Um, it is a challenge, definitely for sure. Uh, and it's really testing me. I've never worked so hard on something so quick. Um, so it's been crazy uh, having to do it in such a short time, like three days to turn this whole 10 minute video around. Trying to keep it interesting, trying to keep it relevant to front nights to, to not fill the needs with what people want to see. I know that the screen is technically not even the main part of the show, uh, but I want to give people the best experience I can with the amount of time I've got. And then the time finally came. One of my favorite nights of the year is called Fake Nights. And essentially on this night, the Fright Nights cast and management and crew basically get to experience and test out this year's Fright Nights before anyone else ever experiences these mazes. So this whole evening starts in the Angry Birds 4D cinema and each cast basically introduces themselves to Fright Nights. <laughs>
And from there, everyone there, the actors, the staff, basically experience one maze attraction or show at a time. It's the first time the actors really get to experience like having guests in their attractions so they're kind of finding their feet. We were filming a few bits of content just because now that the event is up and running, we might as well take this opportunity to bag some content from within, especially the new mazes and attractions and scare zones. Yeah, it all ended over at Amity where we all got to watch that Amity dance together. <laughs> management go up and do a lovely speech. Big up Emily for shouting us out. It's always an absolute pleasure. Round of applause for yourselves. Making videos, everything. Um, so yeah, thank you very much. So yeah, everyone really deserves the credit for tonight, and it's all come together. And the next thing is press night. So the next day was a press night, and this is always a very exciting day, but also a very, very busy day. And because we were working press night this year, we knew that this was gonna be a busy one. We basically spent the entirety of press night just running about from maze to maze, to scare zone, to show, just getting as much content as we could. Because obviously, the sooner you can get this content, the sooner the park can start using it to advertise this year's event. Myself and Jack were doing all sorts of video work, and so was Kieran. We were all running around the park getting as much footage as we possibly could. So yeah, we basically just bagged so much content on press night. But the crown jewel of press night was that we managed to see a legacy testing for the first time. Unfortunately, it wasn't quite ready for fake nights. But at the end of press night, after everyone had gone home, they did like their first test and we wandered over to the beach to watch it. And it was so cool to see. <laughs> trick-or-treat song in the Friday Night's Legacy Show. Unbelievable. Thank you for witnessing the legacy. I shall once again lock the gateways to the evil beyond. And then finally, when we got to see it for the first time in one of the like, rehearsal nights, it was like, one of the most rewarding experiences because we'd worked so hard, so hard, couldn't think about anything else. And then finally, we got to see it and we got to see the reactions of people like watching it. And like I said, it's been on my bucket list and on my, my goal list to have something of this scale displayed on a screen that I'd been able to create from scratch. Um, so it was, it was like goosebumps when I saw it for the first time and uh, every time since I absolutely love watching it. I'm really proud of what we managed to do with the time frame we were given. Obviously it would have been great to be able to film content for it and, and create custom content but with what we had, I'm really happy with what we, we turned around. Yeah, I'm so, so proud of these boys for all of the work they did on Legacy.
So the last video that we had to create was like a now open sort of big showcase of the event, which we shot on the staff night, the press night and the opening night. I was going around with the camera, just capturing content from all the attractions now that they were running, um, because that's something that we can't get in, in, in like the lead up to the event because the attractions aren't, aren't built. Um, so it was during that time that we spent going around getting photos, getting videos, um, all for this big now open video and for the park to be able to release imagery throughout the, the run to promote it. And this video, I'm really proud of how it turned out. get a drone in the air uh, to film Legacy and to film the park after dark. That video alone just shows like the scale and the passion and how good the event is. Now it's weird to say, but although Friday Nights is obviously the main event, this is the point where we get to relax most of all, because obviously the months and months up to it, we're just working around the clock to make sure that everything is ready for the start of Friday Nights. But once Friday Nights has begun, we kind of take our opportunity to just visit the event and enjoy it. Don't get me wrong, there's still multiple points where we're coming in to film and photograph the odd bit. But yeah, now that Friday Nights is up and running, we could just come to the event, enjoy ourselves, bring our friends and family, and watch all of the awesome reviews come in online. So once the official Fright Nights run comes to an end this year on the 31st, of October, Halloween. We then go into a period called the buyouts, which is essentially where different companies or corporations will hire out Fort Park and Friday nights will be a part of that. Now, I still struggle to comprehend that this year, I actually had my own buyout in the form of SLK STN Unlocked. This project that I'm gonna be talking about today is the biggest thing I've ever worked on. That's right, on the 3rd of November this year, I'm going to be hiring out Fort Park Fright Nights for the evening, and all of you guys are invited. So during these months and months of hard work, um, in the build up to Fright Nights and during Fright Nights, I was working on my own little passion project in the form of Unlocked. Right at the end of the event, we had Jack's event to look forward to, which I'd seen him working on throughout the whole year. Uh, I'd been hearing about it, throughout the house, hearing his ideas. I was coming to the park for regular meetings with the events team. I was spending hours at my desk designing visuals and everything. So yeah, that's just another thing that I was working on throughout all of this hard work um, for Fright Nights. I was working on my own Fright Nights event, which is something I've always wanted to do. And it's always been a very distant dream of mine to in some way hire out Fort Park and especially Fright Nights, my favorite time of the year. And yeah, this year I decided, right, it's the time to do it. So yeah, on the 3rd of November, I remember waking up and feeling like I was going to a boxing fight. Like I'd hardly slept the night before. My mind was just constantly racing with things I needed to do, ready for the next day. And I woke up like, oh my God, today is the day. <laughs> so today is the day of SLK STN Unlocked. <laughs> I'm stressed out, man. But no, I'm so, so excited. I've been planning this for so many months and literally waking up this morning felt like I was waking up ready for a boxing fight. It was like, this is the day. Today we smash it. And yeah, I've put the work in, so I know it's gonna go smoothly. I've got custom mats made. They arrived this morning. I've got custom cups. My printer just behind me over there is literally printing off the guest list right now crazy so yeah i'm gonna head to the park with the boys we're gonna set up for a few hours just check everything's all good to go and then it begins it really doesn't feel like today i'm ready for it but i don't think you'll ever be ready for, for something this big it's literally the biggest day of my life so yeah Let's do it, oh my God. <laughs> Eventually, we made our way to the park and I remember walking into the marquee with Kieran and Archie and it all just hit me like, oh my God, this is happening. Oh my God, I've got monitors either side. That was loud Look just at then the as well. Setup. <laughs> this is a bit mad. The view's crazy as well. Wow. Floor. Look at that, mate. You're living good tonight. 
I have no words. I actually have no words for this. I was low key just expecting a little black table. Maybe. But you, you are so. Anyone want to charge their phones? I've got. Yeah. I've got like 12, 12 PowerPoints up here. I just remember being so nervous on this day and building up to this day because although I'd worked with the amazing Fort Park events team, at the end of the day, this was my event. It had my name on it and I'd spent so many hours working on these designs and concepts. I worked with some really talented creators, big up Toby, big up Kieran and Archie, obviously they helped out massively. But at the end of the day, all of this pressure was on my shoulders and I remember sitting in that cinema being so nervous and big up the boys. They bought me a, a nice uh, alcoholic beverage. And I don't want to sound like an alcoholic, but my, my worries did slowly go away. I got up on stage and welcomed everyone to the event. First of all, before we get into all of the unlocked stuff, Project Exodus is happening! For you guys, what is roller coaster? Are you ready to meet some familiar friends? It was like a big celebration of the event and it was like the event in its prime. Like everyone that was there was really enthusiastic, the attractions were great. It was really cool just to be in, a, in an environment where everyone there is there because they love Friday nights, they want to be there and it was great to see what Jack had pulled off with all his hard work. That's so sick. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's wow. go! That's actually outrageous. That's big. That's big. That is big. Oh. Oh, that look. Let's head into the locksmith's workshop, mate. <laughs> look at this. Gosh, my first run through the locksmith. I've got all the doors from the videos. I like this. this is sick. Me and Kieran handcrafted these doors. No, we didn't. We didn't. <laughs> of the Exlibus is gone. Ah, Y'all yeah, may only answer the sawmill if you give us all a compliment. You're very passionate about your work. Yeah. Yeah, we are. Yeah. 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 Okay, so Eric. He's trying to get Oh, wait, no. Oh, yeah. 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 Welcome to my family sawmill. We got a big extra bush shape problem yeah. on our hands. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Man is going to get baptized. Like, like to be baptized, bro. Just funny. Lee can't swim. Soaking, soaking wet. No, 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 not today. But it was such a laugh. The maze is running amazingly. Even the actors afterwards said to me, it was so cool to just have people that you could tell were passionate. They were just able to have a laugh and properly scare these big Fright Nights fans that we all are. And as far as I can tell from chatting to people afterwards and everything, it was a brilliant evening from there on out. I'm all up from down, down south from Pompey. All right. Um, good hour and a half, you know, nearly two hour drive up here. Well, yeah, well worth it. Good, oh, good laugh. It is so cool to be here with like minimal cues. Jack, thanks so much for holding this event, it is incredible. This Friday night and this event has been great. It's been absolutely brilliant. So like full packs of actors and great fun meeting new people. I think the event has been absolutely fantastic. It's great to be able to get unlimited run throughs on the mazes. Like we haven't had that opportunity in years and here we are. I'm so, so happy that Jack Silkstone has managed to rent out the entire park to host its own event, SLK STN Unlocked. Well done to Jack. We're so proud of you. You've absolutely smashed it. It's been yes. an incredible event. Yes. Loads of people here. It's packed. Seeing the mazes. Yeah. The actors are going crazy. The actors are going absolutely crazy. Men the best run throughs we've ever had. Absolutely. So good. It's time for graduation, losers. I have to say my favourite part of the evening, although I absolutely loved obviously the Fright Nights offering, just being able to celebrate Fright Nights and just everything with everyone at the after party afterwards was a dream come true. Seeing Arch Nemesis being able to DJ at Fort Park off of the stage, I know it's, it's literally been a dream of his for years and seeing him being able to do that was so, so cool. To be able to find see Arch as well DJing and playing like theme park, Fright Nights tracks to everyone, everyone's going crazy as a whole. It was like the best way to wrap the event up. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being here right now. This is honestly a bit mad. But the time has finally come for me to hand over to Mr. Arch Nemesis. Yeah. Don't want to make some noise! I won't sugarcoat it, SLK STN Unlocked was probably one of the greatest days of my entire life. Um, to be able to DJ at Thor Park on Friday nights, on stage, in front of such amazing people with my best friends was a memory that I will never forget and a memory that I will treasure for the rest of my life. I put so much hard work into making sure all of the music that I played uh, for that one hour set that I did um, Combining theme park music and attraction soundtracks that myself and everyone else there know and love with music that we also know and love was just, I have no words, it was, it was a surreal moment and just seeing Jack being able to do his thing um, 
It was such a proud moment for me. First of all, can we say a massive, massive thank you, a huge round of applause for Jack Silson for putting on this event. Thank you so much for being here. Enjoy. I did drink a little bit more than I probably should have, but honestly, I was just so nervous building up to it, and I just needed a few drinks to get me through the night. Thank you all so much for watching. SOK SCN Unlocked has been a major success, and I'll see you next year. Come on! There are exciting plans in the pipeline for this year's SLK SCN Unlocked, so watch this space. Now my event was kind of in the middle of the buyouts that I mentioned, however, obviously the very final buyout eventually comes around. And of course, we were at the park on that day for the main reason of saying goodbye to Fright Nights 2022 and mainly Creek Freak Massacre. So yeah, we spent our day just going into the mazes and scare zones for the last time that year. And I remember we headed over to Creek Freak for the final run through. I was gonna say of the year, but Ever. I'm going to have to experience Creek Free Massacre for the very last time. We're in the very last group, um, and don't we know it, it was awful. Uh, we were absolutely tormented in there. We got sent around multiple times. In the pre-show, we were bigging up Project Exma Bus, as they called it. We were bigging it up. We were so excited for it. And yeah, the Buckwheats were having none of it. They violated us in that final run through. They sent us around multiple times. They were doing unspeakable things, but it was such a laugh. It was a sad time. It really was. A real lump in the throat moment uh, with the final run through of Freak Freak Massacre. And there was just this amazing atmosphere and this buzz. And we came out of the maze and everyone was just celebrating and the Buckwheats were going crazy. <laughs> There was great atmosphere outside the attraction. Everyone was like running around, splashing in the puddles. And Yeah, it was just an amazing atmosphere and it was a perfect send off to that iconic Fright Nights maze. RIP, Creek Freak Massacre. lie I was actually really emotional hearing that thing go into that building for the first time my eyes genuinely teared up and me and Alice over there literally just looked at each other and we were like oh my god And then yeah, once all of the guests have gone home, it's always tradition at Fright Nights. It's a part of Fright Nights culture for all of the actors to head over to Amity to watch this big final dance of the year where the management join in and everything and it's just such a laugh.
seeing everyone exactly where we were a month ago during fake nights when no one really knew each other but now the actors have made friends for life um, obviously all of us crew and like you know, Fright Nights management we've all seen these attractions develop throughout Fright Nights and it's just so cool to kind of see everyone and just celebrate what a great year that Fright Nights has been Once again, the management got up on stage and did a lovely speech. You know what, I, I would like to have a little shout out to Jack, Kieran and Archie who are also here filming tonight. Thank you so much for coming behind the scenes on the promotional videos, uh, the part wide music that you hear as well, the soundtrack Calamity, um, Archie massively helped you. this right night um, each and every single one of you I think this has been the most consistent performances we've seen over Fright Nights um, in the history of our this year so that is a testament to all of you guys and um, to thank you for all your hard work it really is a different job and hopefully you've absolutely taken something away from it whether it's Friends for Life a performance that you never thought you'd ever do before um, and really fun experiences so we hope you've all enjoyed it as much as we have watched, enjoyed watching you guys so thank you very much that's why we do what we do. Um, and what more? Oh, rap party on Tuesday! And then, yeah, the celebrations, of course, continue throughout November. We go to the Friday Night's rap party and just have a brilliant time celebrating with everyone. And then, yeah, suddenly, Friday Nights has come to an end. Friday Nights 2022 really was a special year for Friday Nights. I think we really elevated the marketing and the promo and everything that we kind of worked on in comparison to 2021. And hopefully we continue to do that even more so in the future. I'm really happy with the universe that we've been building with Friday Nights, obviously with the introduction of Fear in 2021 and the Locksmith in 2022. I like how we're building this kind of narrative and lore around Fright Nights and it's something that I'm very passionate about. I absolutely love seeing all of the speculation that you guys give in the kind of lead up to Fright Nights and we're kind of taking all of this feedback and the way in which you react to all of this marketing and we're very much using it to build future promos. 2021 for us when we did the Fright Nights campaign was an absolute dream come true and I didn't think it could get any better than that. But 2022, it absolutely skyrocketed, topped that for us. Like it was incredible being able to work alongside even more amazing people and be able to bring our vision to life in a new way. We're actually building a set. One of my main highlights from Fright Nights 2022 is very much that locksmith promo shoot. Being able to build that set from the ground up along with a really talented team of people was so, so cool. And obviously being able to theme it ourselves and add scenery and all of that stuff and then filming the content that we managed to film in there was such an amazing experience and we learned so much along the way. That's a theme with the entirety of Fright Nights. We learn so much in this process and it's stuff that we are very much gonna take forward into future years. The highlights for me has definitely been watching these shows. It's such a rewarding process for me uh, to sort of stand back and take it all in. I've worked super, super hard on making sure every little detail is just right. Collaborating with other amazing creatives such as Martin and UVE who've been able to bring those projects to life was the absolute absolute best part for me. I think my favourite part of this whole process is, the, is just being involved with the creative decisions and seeing all of the teams here work behind the scenes and find out like how many people actually bring this event to life and what it takes. Like, I never knew that before. Um, so being able to be part of that team and be welcomed in is like, is 
indescribable. It really is a Fright Nights family. As cliche as that sounds, everyone just works together to create this one product that we are all so, so passionate about. I just want to take this opportunity to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone at Fort Park that we've worked with in the build up for Fright Nights 2022. Obviously the marketing team, they all know who they are. Thank you to them for putting their trust in myself and Kieran and of course Archie. Um, and allowing us all of this creative control when working on such a big brand that is Fort Park and Fright Nights. Like we honestly have so much passion for it and we're so grateful that we're kind of allowed to um, express all of that in these videos. And of course, thank you so much to everyone that we've worked along this journey with, UVE who created Survival Games, uh, Martin, the absolute legend and his team within Unique Concepts, all of the Fright Nights ends team, they're all absolute legends. And just anyone along the way that we've bumped into or has helped out with any of these shoots or videos or projects that we've been working on. I really, really appreciate it. And as I said, Fright Nights is a huge, huge family. And obviously the biggest thank you of all goes to you guys, the viewers, the Fright Nights fans, who for years and years have watched my construction updates for Fright Nights, um, and then all of the promo videos when we started working on that, and all of the live streams. Without you all and the amazing Fright Nights community, there is no promo campaign. It wouldn't ever be the same without the passion and love that you guys share. So yeah, thank you all so much. We've got Archie on board now, so we're like the three of us. We, we all work together now. We're an even stronger team. I think we've got an absolute dream team at this point. Being able to bring Archie into this whole ecosystem, the three of us now work so well with the marketing team and the entire Fright Nights family. We're slowly but surely becoming part of the furniture. And yeah, I'm so excited to see what impact the three of us can have on this fantastic event in the future. Being able to work with my best friends on such a creative project that we have so much passion for meant the world to me. Our excitement for this place is insane and the sky is the limit for what we're able to do. I think if you told younger me that this was a possibility and this was something that I would be able to do and with my, with my best friends be able to create content for something that I'm so passionate about and something that brings me so much joy, I wouldn't have believed it and I still struggle to believe that we're in this position. From this period every year where we film for our nights and we, we spend a lot of time on it, I genuinely get memories to last a lifetime. I absolutely love Fright Nights with all of my heart. I've been a fan for a decade at this point and I plan to continue going down this path. My ultimate dream is to end up in a creative position here at Fright Nights. I want to be able to design mazes, design the scare zones, design the shows and just help kind of create Fright Nights as a whole and build this storyline. And I mean, we're all so young, like I'm 23 and being able to be in this position is so cool. And believe me, I don't take it for advantage at all. I know how lucky I am to be here. And yeah, myself and the boys are so grateful to be in this position and we're gonna continue working to get to the point where we want to be and to keep elevating Fright Nights. Now I'm sure you're all just as excited as we are about Fright Nights 2023. And I'm very happy to say that pre-production is going very well for the Fright Nights 2023 marketing campaign things are looking exciting and i'm sure it won't be too long at all before you get some teasers as to what 2023 fright nights has in store so yeah thank you all so so much for watching this fright nights 2022 documentary i really appreciate it my name is jack silkstone good bye Once again, I lock the gateways to the evil beyond. It's time for me to hang up my keys and pass Fright Nights of 2023 over to the next disciple of fear.